They call it the unbound state. It's when you're floating in the ocean and you can no longer see the shore that you've come from and you're in the middle and you're in this unbound state where it's like, do you go back to that? But you can't see the next shore. Like you don't know where you're going either. You're just there. And then you slowly begin to see that next shore. But I think if you wait until you have clarity to take that leap, you're never gonna leave. Hello, my friends. Welcome to It's All Magic. I am your guide, your host, and your friend, Devin Hine. And here, we'll be discussing how to make your life truly feel like magic. I believe that our very existence on Earth is nothing less than a miracle, and that we all have so much potential to learn, to grow, to experience, and to create during our short time here. It is both my passion and my pleasure to walk this path of life optimization by your side, where we'll discuss topics like passion, purpose, intuition, manifestation, physical well-being, and much, much more. I'm a yoga teacher, a meditation and breathwork facilitator, and a national board certified health and wellness coach. But more importantly, I am an eternal optimist, a lover of life, and a forever student. It is my hope that with each and every episode, you too, will finally start to believe it really is all magic after all. Ready to dive in? Let's do it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another magical episode of It's All Magic. I am so happy to have you here with me and my dear friend today. She is such an inspiration to me. She is a video marketing expert and human design professional who has really found ways to merge all of her interests, desires, hopes, and dreams into one beautiful entrepreneurial path. She is an incredible role model for aspiring entrepreneurs out there or people who simply want to learn how to master their daily habits, master their decision making, master their business and master their life using the principles of human design. So we cover a lot of material today and it is so much fun. We essentially go on a three part journey together. In the first part, we talk about the beginning of Amanda's career journey where she mastered the art and craft of video. She went to film school. She became a video producer, videographer for well-known people like Ryan Holiday and Tim Ferriss, eventually starting her own YouTube channel where she could share her own messages as well. And then the second part of her journey, we go into the pivot that she is still enduring today. The time in her life where she went through a lot of changes, entering motherhood for the first time, finding human design, and much, much more. It has altered her entrepreneurial path and life in countless ways, and we talk about what pivots are like and how we can best go through them. Then the third part of the journey is all about human design. So if you are new to human design, definitely stay tuned because Amanda is a wonderful teacher and she walks us through what this ancient, essentially personality assessment is like. It is a very powerful tool that actually encapsulates a lot of different ancient and modern systems such as astrology, I Ching, Kabbalah, and the chakra system. So stay tuned. There's a lot to come. But before we dive into the conversation, as always, I want to guide us through a little bit of breathing. Breathing is always a good idea. So let's do some together. Today, I want us to keep it short, sweet, and simple with the four, seven, eight breath. Again, if you are new here, we always elongate the exhale longer than the inhale in order to trigger our vagus nerve and calm our nervous system, which is more or less what we want to do all the time because it's not good for us to be in a constant state of fight or flight. The way this breath works is that we'll breathe in through the nose for a count of four, hold at the top for a count of seven, slow exhale out of the mouth with an O-shaped mouth as if blowing through a straw for a count of eight and then we begin again so it'll look something like this beautiful let's do it if you'd like to close your eyes you can and if not that's perfectly acceptable as well 
So let's go ahead and just empty out from our previous breath here. And then we'll begin our three rounds. Okay, begin breathing in for four. Hold for seven. Slow exhale for eight. And inhale for four. Hold for seven. Slow exhale for eight. Last one. Inhale for four. Hold for seven. Slow exhale for eight. Gorgeous, normal breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Mm. Mm. You can go ahead and flutter open your eyelids if you got the chance to close them. Ah, say this almost every week, but I feel like a whole new woman now. <laughs> I cannot wait to show you the conversation I had with Amanda. Without further ado, let's get on into the conversation. I will see you on the other side, my friends. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome back to another magical episode of It's All Magic. Today, we have a friend and inspirational role model of mine on the show. She is a video marketing expert and human design professional who has found a way to beautifully blend those two together where she helps her clients find and share their authentic message online using the principles of human design to enhance their life and their business. She is such an inspiration to me. She has just about 70,000 subscribers on YouTube, she has launched courses, she's a coach, and she somehow wears all of these hats seamlessly. I first met her in the astrology training course that we're both in currently. And as soon as I met her, I was drawn instantly to her grounded confidence and her depth. So without further ado, let's welcome Amanda Horvath to the show. Hi, Amanda. How are you? <laughs> Hello. You are just such a natural at this. I love it. <laughs> well, so I appreciate it. So yeah. I want to kick it off with the question you might know I ask all of my guests, which is for you, what makes life truly feel like magic? I love this question, actually, because it's been a huge thing that I've been integrating in my own life. Because I've been, I've actually had a very hard time tapping into the magic of the moment, mm. right? Yeah. And so it's something that I really have been cultivating in my own life. And it's, I think for me, the magic comes when you're able to sit with the struggle of whatever is currently happening and yeah. be willing to accept, like, I am struggling and it's okay and have that not actually interfere with like the moment or put any like judgments on it. Mm -hmm. And then when you do that, it can kind of like trans create like a transference into like another magical experience. And that's really what I've been playing with in terms of the magic of the moment and allowing the magic to unfold. <laughs> I love that. I was recently actually interviewed on a podcast and we were talking about the concept of magic in life. And I said, for me, because I've always been an eternal optimist, like my friends always called me Miss Sunshine, Little Miss Sunshine, that kind of thing, that I think people assume if you are happy or if you have found magic in the process of life, that it means you have no challenges. Life is easy for you. And that's not the case. I think you said it so beautifully that it's finding beauty and magic in the hardships. Like that's part of the magic. And I think until you accept that part, you can't find the magic. And I think I have had a hard time being like in the present moment because I was thinking what you were saying. Like everyone talks about the present moment is so magical. It's so beautiful. But until you can be in the 
struggle of it and the discomfort of it, you can't get there. So yes. yeah, it's powerful. Yes, it is. So I'm glad you bring this up so early on because what I want to do with you today is a little different from the other podcasts you've been on. I really want to go on a journey with you and with our audience members, of course. I want to walk through the path you've been on because I find the main nuggets of wisdom we can get from any individual is from hearing their story and all of the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations. So I kind of have three parts of your story planned for today. Perfect. So let's start at the beginning, at least of kind of your professional story, if you will. So part number one is video. <laughs> Shocking. So let's start with what got you interested in video? What was kind of the beginning of that journey like for you? Yeah, it actually started pretty young. I was maybe even in eighth grade and someone had asked me, if you could do anything in life and talent didn't matter, like you could be a basketball player, you could be this, like what would you be? And I have no idea why, but I said, I'd be a film director. Came out of nowhere. And it was like, <sighs> interesting. And my mom has always been amazing at like recognizing things that we're interested in and then getting us on that path. And so I got enrolled in like Austin Film School with a, a bunch of adults because the only time that I could do it was the adult class. And my mom got me in there despite the fact that <laughs> I was not an adult. <laughs> and, and so that was my first experience of like making short films and writing scripts and all that. And then in high school, there was a film class where it was like you would – give the news to the school every single day, I think, or week. We always, my brothers and sisters and I, we try to remember whether it was daily or Classic. weekly. <laughs> and, and there was this experience that you would go through every single role from being the anchor mm -hmm. that was delivering the news to the person that's switching between the cameras to the director, to the editor, all the things. And I just loved it so much. I loved the experience. And there was something that really called me about video making. Mm -hmm. And then I got to this, I had this moment where I actually studied abroad in high school for a year and I didn't have that experience of the film class. And I really mm -hmm. felt the void. Like I felt like I wanted to create and I went on this journey to South Africa actually. And I, I think I got cholera. I'm not entirely sure. But How it was do you like, not know if you got cholera? <laughs> no one knows what it was. Like they never diagnosed it. But I was, I was laid horizontal for like four or five days. Couldn't sit up. Couldn't oh, do wait, anything. I was out. sleeping the entire time. It was like, oh my gosh, like I might die was the feeling that I had. And then after I kind of came out the other side, finally, I went to go see He's Just Not That Into You. Have you seen that? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> So I am a big like chick flick fan, like rom-com. I used to call myself a hopeless romantic. My husband was like, you need to stop calling yourself that, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like 100%. So I went and saw that movie in South Africa and it was about guy girl differences, something that I've been obsessed with my entire life, like mm -hmm. the masculine, the feminine, how they inter intersect and all the things. Yes. And I just was hit with like the first true magical moment in my life where I've, it was like something happened and it was this voice, this calling that was like, this is it. Like, this is your thing. Like you're here to share stories. You're here to spread a message around the world. And it, I walked out of there just like, did you feel that to my friend that was with me? You know, like even to this day, it's like a weird yeah. moment. Right. And so that really solidified my path to going to film school becoming a videographer after I graduated and yeah, starting my entrepreneurial path. <laughs> yes. I honestly love that because I've listened to, I mean, so many of the podcasts you were on, your videos, and I hadn't heard that particular story. I'm sure you've told it. I, I have not heard. really been told that. Oh that my much. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I love about it is that the fact that you could trace it back to childhood, I even when I was doing my health and wellness coaching one-on-one, -on -one, when people would come to me struggling with a sense of purpose or career, I'm sure you've heard this time and time again, I would often say, 
What did you enjoy doing as a kid? What did you naturally gravitate towards? Or what do people naturally go to you for help with? And it's really cool to kind of follow those nuggets where for you it's like there's always been something there, but it wasn't till that aha moment where you're like, this is it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And the void and like the death, almost death or whatever, all the experience, it was magical for sure. <laughs> exactly. So you went from all of kind of your high school film experience to film school. You came out of it, became this video marketer. You worked with Ryan Holiday, Tim Ferriss, like really amazing experiences. And then at a certain point, this is what I'm really fascinated by, you decided, well, I have a message to share. So you decided to start your YouTube channel. Can you kind of walk us through what that epiphany was like, what what starting your channel was like, and having gone from a background where you helped other people film their message and finding your own, just walk us through that journey a bit. Yeah, absolutely. So... <clears throat> and this is one of the reasons why when we get to the future and talk about human design, why mm-hmm. I think I grabbed onto it so heavily is each of these moments has very much felt like a, an intuitive hit and a calling mm-hmm. and an energetic invitation that really opened up. And so for two years, I heard this voice that was like, you should do video, you should do video. And I'm like, no, no, I'm a behind the camera kind of girl. Like, we're not doing this. You know, like I got it, you know, but there was this calling that was there and I was incredibly awkward in front of the camera. You could hear my heartbeat through the microphone, like very scared, nervous. A lot of people, they look at my videos today and they're like, yeah, Amanda, but like, I can't do that. And I'm like, no, you don't get really? it. <laughs> yes. You can do it. It's just pushing past that fear. <laughs> Yeah. So I finally made the decision after climbing my way up and getting these dream clients that these dream clients, while they're great, like this is not what I want to do. I do not mm-hmm. want to trade time for money forever. And I was listening to Amy Porterfield, who runs the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast, who I love. She's been a huge mentor of mine throughout the years. And I remember the moment of like, wow, I could create a course. I, I, I'm good enough now. What if I didn't have to learn more, get enough, you know, go through more certifications or whatever it is in order to be ready? What if I'm ready now? And so I started asking that question of if I was ready now, what can I teach? Right. And it slowly became evident. I had this intuition that was like, you know what? Why are people paying me thousands of dollars to sit in front of the camera and hit record literally thousands of dollars for me just to sit there. And then it's their first time on camera. They're awkward. They hate it. They never are going to use it because they didn't like how they looked or anything like, like something happened, you know, Mm -hmm. most people's first video is terrible. You don't want to pay a thousand dollars for it. So it was like, Hey, what if I taught people how to do this themselves? Because it's not that complicated and the technology coming out is revolutionary. At the time it seemed like it was something that was new. No one thought, oh, yeah, we, mm. we should start filming their videos. Today, it's obvious, right? 2024. We're <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah, film on your phone. Mm-hmm. So that's really what it started for me was this inkling into the future of here's where we're headed. And what if I can get a course up and running that would help people learn how to do this themselves so that they don't have to pay someone like me to do this? Mm, I love that. And I love when the birth of a new path happens because you you saw there was an issue out there, the problem you actually wanted to solve, and you had the answers. That's gold. So I've also heard you talk about the fact that video is a spiritual teacher. Yes. And I very much feel that way about entrepreneurship as well. So I want you to – what does that mean, Amanda? Why is it a spiritual teacher? What does that look like? Yeah. So it's, it's an interesting, it's a really interesting thing that came to me very throughout the journey of having a YouTube channel, because when you start, you start with zero subscribers, right? We've even texted about this a little bit, like you mm-hmm. start and you're posting and you're putting yourself out there and it's uncomfortable because people aren't watching, people aren't commenting, you know, now you're, you're putting yourself out there in your network of she's doing something it's not really working, but I'm going to keep watching because 
she's clearly up to something, right? And so we have to like have that confidence to go out front first. And there's more of like an internal journey that begins to unfold initially in like the phase one. And then slowly over time, the, the spiritual teacher that is video, like it makes you face your demons. Like I hate how I look on camera. I hate how I sound on camera. I don't like this thing about myself, so I need to change this thing, as well as I don't have any videos to film today, and I need to film some videos, and so I'm going to sit in front of the camera and just see what comes out. And when that comes out, you're tapping into an essence that's greater than you, in my opinion, and a voice begins to speak through you. Like I'm always like, God, what is the message you want me to share today? Like, speak through me. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, that begins to set a path for you as you move forward Mm -hmm. on your career. Each video that you release gives a different part of the story, puts you in a different, attracts different people, right? And so slowly this video thing that you're doing, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, all the things, whatever it is, it begins to take on a life of its own that is way different than you would even expect. Like when I started in 2018, I did not know I would be doing what I am doing now. Yeah, exactly. I love that. And I think what is so spiritual about it beyond everything you shared is that even in the beginning, when you don't really know what it'll look like, or you might not even know what message am I sharing, you have to hold the faith that you will get somewhere. And Mm -hmm. as I've heard you talk about on videos and podcasts, you're documenting the journey. You know, people want to actually look at someone that they resonate with, oh, they they have something that's relatable to who I am and where I am in my path and look what they're doing. It's not always about already being the billionaire on a yacht that's like, hey, maybe you can do it too. But it's like, hey, I'm I'm just a girl sitting in front of a camera begging God to send words through my mouth. <laughs> like that's exactly. all it is. <laughs> yes. I love yeah. that. So how do you feel like how do you feel like this spiritual journey has gotten you to where you are today in the sense of I, I want to hear when you started, what your vision was and how it has changed through the years? Yeah, absolutely. So I started in June 2018 with the message of create videos without breaking the bank. You're taking out tons of your time. Mm. And I said that for a good five years on the channel. Mm. And in it was 2020 was my first year in the course business. So I had I had done two years of YouTube videos prior to actually making my first course launch. Okay. And it was January of 2020, just before the pandemic hit, right? So it was a very transitional phase for what I I had no idea it was going to be a transitional phase, right? But if I would have continued being a videographer, I would have been out of a job in 2020. Mm. So it was a huge, like, I was like all in on the course business that year. I was going to do three live launches in January, May, and December. And I followed through on that. Well, in May of 2020, I discover human design. And I discover I'm a projector. And the journey began of diving into this system that really just grabbed a hold of me that like I did not have a choice but mm-hmm. to keep digging and to keep looking at it. And and there's been many times where I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to forget this. <laughs> you know, like I want to go walk <laughs> the other way. But it, it it I haven't been able to. There's something so real, so true about it. Mm-hmm. And the thing that really gripped me was there's been this question my entire life of like, why am I so different? Like, what, what, mm-hmm. why am I so different? Why did I not fit in in high school or this or that? You know, like throughout the different years. And this gave me some of those answers. Yeah. And I was previously like really into the Enneagram, and that's a complex system. Mm-hmm. But then human design was like a hundred times more <laughs> complex. <laughs> and I was like, I, I can't hit the bottom of this. This is fantastic. Um, yeah. And so this concept of me being a projector and only 20% of the population being a projector and how projectors are meant to work differently, we're here to be guides, not doers, and we're not here to go, 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 push, push, push. Well, I was going, going, going and pushing, pushing, pushing. Mm -hmm. Intuitively, I knew step off the hamster wheel, don't trade time for money. I had read books, you know, the e-myth and uh, Robert Kiyosaki's Cashflow Quadrant and all these things. Like I knew that there was another path. Mm-hmm. But I was, and I was trying to get there, but it felt like 
the course business was like yet again something that I thought was going to be freedom and then it was just another manifesting generator activity that didn't align with mm. me and my energy. And so that's when the second death began. <laughs> that is so fascinating. There's so much to get into that. I want to get into two major topics that you just brought up, but to kind of round out this video portion, because I want to dive deep on that. Don't worry, we're coming back. So for people that are listening that are either aspiring entrepreneurs themselves or they just have a message they want to share with the world. Maybe they're really into politics and they're like, why is no one talking about this or whatever? What are your top three tips for people when you're trying to help them just enter the world of video to share their message with the world? Absolutely. The first is really pick one platform. And I Ooh. highly suggest you do YouTube, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Because YouTube, while it's a harder one to get up and running, it's not as much of an immediate gratification. Like it took me six months to hit 500 subscribers. It took me uh, at one year, I was at 1,200. At I think a year and a half, I was at 4,400. Or I started 2020 with 4,400 and like ended with 22,000. So it like, it goes exponentially. Mm -hmm. But the beginning, like in those first six months or that first year, it's like, is this worth it? This is I know. It, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the reason that YouTube is so valuable is the videos that I made back then are still pulling people into my world today. Mm. And you are who you are. And that's why YouTube is called YouTube, right? It's like, even though my message is shifting, my message is evolving, who I was five and a half years ago or however long it's been, is still me and people are being drawn to that energy. And so instead of running on the hamster wheel of Instagram and and having to post five times a day or maybe even three times a day on TikTok to be able to keep up and, and do all this stuff, it's like, why not just post one video a week and allow it to happen in the background as sustainable as possible, which would really be my second tip, mm. is how can you do it in a sustainable way? There's the perfect way to do it. And then there's the, I can manage this way. Yeah. And allow yourself to do that. I can manage this. And so I'll keep going and aim to get better each time. Don't like willy nilly, just like, like, like study, learn how to do it, how to play the game, but then make it real, make it real, make it mm. sustainable. Okay. So. And then yeah. third, because I think that's one and two, right? Right, right, right. Okay. The third is don't get uh, caught up on the tech. <laughs> we got these Zoom, <laughs> Zoom functions going. Love that. The third is don't get caught up on the tech, which I'm really, really big into the, use your phone, right? That's like literally why I started my channel. And if anything, like I, I love to say video changes your life and it mm. really does. And one of the ways it can change your life is it's going to make you upgrade your phone. So if you have an old <laughs> phone, like upgrade that. Okay. That's going to make your life better across the board. I promise you. I love that. <laughs> Especially like the older generations that are hesitant. Like I'm telling you, it is so much easier. Also, you're helping yourself from a cybersecurity standpoint. Old sure. phones can get hacked a lot easier. So that's a whole other rabbit hole. So yes. the second one is update your environment. So what does your environment look like? Is it actually aesthetically pleasing so that when you set up a camera, it actually looks good, right? So like you and I both have like put thought into our backgrounds mm -hmm. and, and have, you know, some aesthetic. And if you don't have any of that naturally within you, like hire a designer that's online that's pretty cheap to like design a corner of your house where you're going to film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then the, the one thing that I would invest in other than upgrading your phone, if you don't have one that's more recent, is a mic. Yeah. And I love, that just happens to be sitting right here, these DJI wireless <laughs> microphones that are fantastic. Amazing. <laughs> um, so if you can, that's where I would splurge is your audio. But what you're doing is perfect too. Like you mm -hmm. have a handheld mic. Those are like, I, I know some of them are like... Zip. 
this two was for a hundred dollars or something like that. Exactly. I think this was fifty bucks on Amazon. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, which is perfect. So you yeah. just need good audio because people won't they'll watch crappy video, but yeah. they won't listen to terrible audio. Oh, that's such a great tip. So to recap those, so what was the first one? I'm forgetting the first one now. Yeah, the first is upgrade your phone. Oh, the first, for, well, okay, the first tip, right? I did three in like the second, the third. <laughs> I the, loved it. <laughs> the first is just start and choose one platform. And one I platform. recommend YouTube. Yes. And then the yeah. second was sustainability, like sustainability. do it in a way that you can maintain. Yes. And then the third is upgrade your tech, your environment, and your microphone. Yes. Yeah. And keep it simple on, on the tech. Like don't complicate your life by getting a camera, like, yeah. use your phone or your, a webcam like you're doing. Yes. I love these tips for so many reasons. Obviously I'm on my own journey that we talk about all the time. And I think the, the one that has been most challenging for me, because I naturally have the spirit of like, I have an idea, I'm going to do it. Like I, I'm, fearless in that way I I act and then I kind of think and I'm like oh shoot what have I started but the, exactly it's a it's a gift and a curse <laughs> but the second one of making it sustainable is something I haven't yet figured out and I heard I was listening to one of the podcasts you were on this morning while working out and I loved something you said they asked you what makes someone stand out in video? And you said consistency, which it, it like blows your mind because we think of like, oh, having the cool graphics at the beginning, a great hook, you know, amazing editing. And it's like, well, those are great. But if you can only pour those into three videos and then that fourth week hits and you're like, well, I'm done with this. YouTube isn't what I thought it was. Then you're just like the thousands of others that were in that same boat. And so I think that is the best. And even for people that aren't using video or they're not entrepreneurs with anything in life, I think, oh, unfortunately, it is that consistency that makes you stand out from the others. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's a caveat of you give yourself grace. You know, if I, this is something that's been new to me only within the last year. Like I was consistent. Mm -hmm. I did not take any breaks for a solid five and a half years. I did oh weekly video. And now I'm playing a little bit more with like making a higher production value and mm -hmm. going like this last week, I made the decision, you know what? I'm going to push off one more week because I know if I do, I can increase audience retention because I'm going to put a little bit more into it and making that judgment call. So there's a there's a fine line that you get to play with best practices versus, you know, where you're at. Mm -hmm. um, but like when I first started really as a videographer, I was still shooting and editing videos for clients. I did not have very much time on my hands. So how do I create videos without breaking the bank or taking up tons of my time? That was applied to me. Like I don't have money to spend on video. I don't have time to spend on video. I have the skills, but like, how do I do this sustainably? And it was sit down once per month, film four videos, outsource the video editing for $7 an hour in the Philippines. Like mm. that is the easiest way to this day that I have found to be able to stay consistent. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for you to help me with that in next week's coaching call. <laughs> so, <laughs> so much to learn. So before we move on past video, are there any other things that you feel like listeners should hear about getting started or best practices, or do you feel like that's kind of a good, good place to wrap up, up to you? I would say become a viewer of YouTube. That is another, if you're going to do a YouTube channel and you've never dove into the world of YouTube, train yourself instead of opening Instagram, open the YouTube app, like get the mm -hmm. YouTube app on your phone, download it, start watching and just seeing what's out there. You're going to be really surprised at what's out there. Yes. If you're, if you're not on YouTube and it will, that alone will create inspiration and opportunity for you. Oh, well said. And I, I love that because I think when you open the YouTube app and you see people that are getting millions of views and they're sitting in their car doing their makeup it's like wait I have a car wait I do my makeup and it it makes you realize 
they are no different than you. The only difference is they picked up the camera. That's it. So I, I feel like you you would say the same thing. Like just pick up the dang camera, hit record, and post it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and know that there's something as perfect timing too. Like it took me two yeah. years of wanting to do it before I finally pulled the trigger. And so if you've had this dream for like 10 years of starting a YouTube channel, like clarity comes with action. You're never going to have a perfect plan. And so, yes, there's a point where you should just pick up the camera and hit record, but also like give yourself grace. If you're just wanting to be, I just want to watch YouTube for six months and now I have a plan that's even a loose plan and now I'm going to hit record. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I love that. We talk a lot about intuition and intuitive hits on this podcast. And, and I had a similar experience with starting this podcast that I'd wanted to do it two years ago. And then just the time didn't work out. And then this summer I was on a walk and I kind of got the nudge again and I came home and I said, Cal, I'm starting the dang thing. Like it's, <laughs> it's time. So I completely agree that you can have the dream, but still kind of feel into your body. Like is now the time. And if your body is saying no, is that the fear talking or is that actually your gut? Um, so I feel like there's a difference there, but amen, sister, I'm, I'm with you. Okay. One so, final thing on that. Okay, one very let's final do thing. it. You can also hit record and never post it. So if you're like, I want to start a podcast, like I'm, I'm starting a human design podcast. We've filmed six episodes. Not one has been released just yet. And it's because we are getting the system in place so that it can be sustainable when we're ready. Right. So like give yourself that permission that like, I'm going to hit record and I'm going to see what I, how I show up, what, what I look like, learn how to edit, like before you actually post a video. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love it. That's a great pin in this video section. Well said. So moving on to step two of this journey, this is what I'm these dang <laughs> balloons. If you're watching this on YouTube, I keep putting up the peace sign, AKA the number two, and these balloons are popping up like crazy. It's terrible. But I really want to hear about this pivot in your journey because I am someone who has pivoted a million and one times and the pivot is something I'm comfortable with. But what I see you doing is finding a way to pivot and not throw out everything else you've done or been. And so before we get into that, can you kind of talk about just what the last two years of being a new mother and priorities shifting, what has this been like? I mean, there's been a lot of change in your world. So much change. <laughs> so yeah, discovering human design, discovering discovering I'm a projector, discovering that everyone I'm following is a manifesting generator that has a completely different energy than me and it's teaching me how to do the world or you know conquer the world in their way versus my way. That was the first step. And the first step was really just observing. But I'm going to continue being a manifesting generator, right? I'm going to continue finishing my year of launches. So I yeah. finished the year out of 2020, but I was observing the energetic shift that was occurring in terms of recognizing, wow, this really does burn me out, th this approach. I need a different approach. And so I planned in 2021 to have a different approach. Well, I also got accidentally pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> hate when that happens. <laughs> I was with my person. I like, we were both, we had said, you know, if something happened, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. For years, I had said, I want to have passive income by the time that I'm 30 so I can be a stay at home mom. Well, I had a baby by 30, whether I wanted it or not, because I had been saying that for five years, you know? Yes, yes. And, and it was the best thing ever, you know? It's uh, total, it's been amazing. And that is not a time to pivot when you are going through the transition into motherhood. Yeah. And so it very specifically, like it put pause on the things that I wanted to do. And mm -hmm. sustainability was, is the name of the game, right? That's always been my thing. And so I was like, you know what? I just need to stay in this lane. I need to create X number of months of batched content so that I can have a maternity leave. I need to focus on life right now. And I need to make that the priority. And underneath the surface, this human design stuff, I'm still diving super deep. I'm getting certified. I'm I'm looking up everyone's charts. You know, I, I'm doing the internal work 
and also going through my own questioning phase with it, right? Which I think is a, something that everyone will face before you can like fully lean in and trust it. And so then, yeah, getting through the first year of motherhood, that I, I came out the other side and I always thought I wanted kids back to back. And it was a big realization of, wow, like if I do that, I am sacrificing myself and I'm sacrificing my joy of pivoting. Like I want, I want to move. I want to do something different than I'm doing now. And so I actually made that decision that I was going to have a bigger age gap between the kids in order to be able to make this transition. And that was not an easy decision to make because that's a lifelong decision. <laughs> it is. It is. And what did those conversations with your husband look like? I mean, he was more than happy to have a bigger gap <laughs> because we were both thrown into parenthood, you know, Yeah. and he stepped up hard too. Like he's, he's an amazing dad and uh, we're married now and all the things, mm -hmm. but it's, um, it, he was definitely down to have a bigger gap. And now we're having the conversation of that second child, mm -hmm. but it's, it's definitely given me enough space to be able to process like, where do I want to go and allow things to unfold and to take a little bit of a, uh, like right now my YouTube channel is not sustainable. I am, I am evolving and I'm allowing my skill set. Like previously I very much was like, I'm going to keep it simple so that others can see that you can do it simple. So it's once per, you know, sit down once per month, film four videos, do what you can in that, outsource the editing. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to have music. You can have simple graphics that repeat themselves over and over again. I stuck to that structure. And now I'm like, I want to stretch my wings. I want to be creative. I want to do videos that other people can't do, right? Yeah. And I want to document my life. And, and so it's a very different way of going about YouTube. It is not currently, it's like it's sustainable. I have an editor, but it's like, if I was to have a baby tomorrow, this would fall apart very quickly. And yeah. so I'm giving myself the, the, uh, the time frame to go through that trial and error process and find my new voice, my new path, my new way of creating so that when I do have that second baby, I'll be set up for success in that next postpartum phase. I love that. So something I'm genuinely curious about, even from a personal standpoint, is when you're an entrepreneur and you have a brand and a message and a method, the, the frequency of your content coming out, the type of content coming out, and you start to pivot in your own life, in your own interests and what you want to share with the world how do you do that? I don't know how else to phrase that other than, you know, I, I look at what you're doing and I am so in awe of how you've been able to bring human design into video and kind of frame it and you mean it, but frame it in the way of I'll help you with, you know, sharing your message with the world, but by learning about your human design type. And I... For, for me personally, I've shared a little bit about my journey, but I've been in kind of the health and wellness spirituality scene my whole career, except for one short corporate blip that was not it. <laughs> and I have, you know, done a lot of different certifications. I have so many different passions. I mean, I'm a Gemini rising, as we've learned about. Like, I, it's so hard. And, and I want to dive into the human design of my chart later, but it's hard for me to niche down to choose just one thing, like it actually feels like it, it will kill me if I do that. And so for anyone out there that is either in your position where you're currently pivoting or is like me, where it's like, how do I choose one thing, Amanda? Like I love breath work and I love astrology and I love plant-based eating. And I like, what, what are your messages? Please help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I heard this head talk very early on and maybe if I can find it, we can put it in the show notes. But it talked about this one guy that he was interested in like three things that were very different, like science and acting being two of them kind of example. I don't know if that's okay. exactly what it was, but something that would seem polar opposite and yeah. how he would continue as he continued his career, he just continued nurturing each one of these things. And that's really what I've continued doing is it's not that I have said, like, there's, I have many different angles of going about this, but I think 
in general, that the first part being continue nurturing what you love, continue leaning into the things that interest you and allow life to unfold, allow the opportunities to come to you where these things begin to overlap. Mm. So for me, I couldn't pivot, right? But human design began bubbling out of me. I didn't have the option but to talk about it. So I have a client call. I don't want to give you advice on how to go about this because I want to see your energy. How does it work, right? I felt blind in a way. I felt like I was giving advice that would not necessarily land for that person, especially since I am a a very different energy type, right, than 70% of the population. And so it was was helpful for me to see that. And then um, another side of it that has been big for me too is investigating. So if you're wanting to go into a different area, right? Like I loved, I listened to your podcast with your best friend that went (laughs) and did cooking school in France, right? Like total pivot. Go investigate something like you and I are both investigators in human design. So you guys can see if you look up your human design chart, do you have a one in your profile uh, that one, three, four, one, five, one, all of these things, then that you're designed to go and look at like investigate Mm -hmm. things, take courses on it, talk to different coaches about it, read books about it, take a, go to France and take a class, like whatever it is, get your hands dirty in that thing And that can be immensely helpful for you just to begin exploring that thing. So the, to wrap the Ted talk conversation at some point in time, this guy, all of his three things got pulled into one career that presented itself. That is so incredibly random, like doing an acting class in a science classroom that is also weaving in business, you know, or something like that. But (laughs) it was like, there's, how are these things coming together? But they did come together because he chose to, be, to lean into all of them and just allow it to unfold. I love that. And I also do believe that anything we're interested in it is for a reason. Like you're drawn to that thing for a reason. You have the dream for a reason, but it's just that in between when you can't yet look back and have 2020 vision where you're like, what am I doing? What path am I on? And um, I think it's, it's the act of writing the story before it's done. It's easy to look back at the last chapter and be like, oh, it all makes sense. But when you're writing the story, sometimes you're like, I don't even know what the next sentence is, baby. (laughs) No idea. They call it the unbound state. My sister's really big into this. She's a somatic coach. And there's this, it's, it's when you're floating in the ocean and you can no longer see the shore that you've come from. And you're in the middle and you're in this unbound state where it's like, do you go back to that or, and, but you can't see the next shore. Like you don't know where you're going either. You're just there. And so it's once again, coming back to that, like discomfort of the moment, like become comfortable with the uncomfortable. Like I am here, all is working out. You know, there's Mm -hmm. a reason for this. And then you slowly begin to see that next shore. But I think if you wait until you have clarity to take that leap, you're never going to leave. So well said. So well said. So something else that I had seen, I think on, it was either your Instagram or one of your older YouTube videos, I want to say, you asked a question that I thought was brilliant. And I want to ask you how you answered the question, how you figure it out. So you brought up the idea of, am I out of alignment or am I out of my comfort zone? So how do you tell the difference? Mm. Oh, that's so good. (laughs) I don't think you can know until you take the next step. So in human design, there's this concept called your signature theme. And each of us, depending on your type, will have a signpost for whether that was a right decision or a wrong decision for you. Hmm. So as a generator, which is 70% of the population, it's, it's going to be frustration. So if you're experiencing frustration right now, there is something that happened that you did not wait to respond. And mm. for if someone's emotional authority, which you are, like sleep on it. You did not sleep on a decision before diving into it, right? Mm-hmm. And so for some reason, something has come up. So for me, it's bitterness, So whenever bitterness begins to arise, when I look back and have that 2020 vision, it's like, 
yeah, I can see now that it was me acting out of alignment. I was actually here trying to prove myself moving forward in a different direction or trying to people please. And that was pulling me into a different direction. And so it's leading me more towards bitterness versus I'm out of my comfort zone. This is incredibly uncomfortable. But once I get to the other side of it, I'm, I'm experiencing success. Like even if it's not mm-hmm. success on the financial department as a, as a projector, we, ours is success for you. It'd be satisfaction as generators. Mm-hmm. So frustration, satisfaction, bitterness, success, um, anger and peace for manifestors mm-hmm. and surprise and disappointment for reflectors. So I was like paying attention to these things really helps you over time fine tune your compass to where when you're in the moment, you know, like what does it feel like when it is in alignment. Wow. Even okay. if it's uncomfortable. That makes sense. I love that. And I also love that you said, I have to sleep on things because that <laughs> makes all the sense in the world and the frustration piece and realizing, okay, so I went wrong somewhere. Like what, what is out of alignment? Um, and, and I think a good reminder for me that I'm taking from that is that what Cal, my husband, is always reminding me, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. So, you know, there are days where it's like, I need to just stop this whole thing. Like, I've gone wrong. And he's like, no, 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 no. You're just doing it in an unsustainable way. So you're upset. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you're right. Um, and so I think even learning your own your own methods of do you suddenly want to just throw it all out the window? Or can you just take some small steps to get back in alignment? Yes. I think every decision that you make, and this once again comes from human design, is like every decision that you make either is going to put you more in towards align to alignment or out of it. And so in this moment, you have the opportunity to move closer to alignment and every step that you take will, will get you there. You just have to trust. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So speaking of human design, my friend, I think it's time for part three of our story. Ooh, no balloons when I throw up three. (laughs) So my audience, my listeners, some people know about human design, but I would guess the vast majority are like design of what? What, Like, what are you talking about? So let's start at the beginning with what is it and how did it come about? Because I find that story fascinating. Oh, you mean the origin story? Oh, the origin story. Let's go there. <laughs> All right, we'll start with the origin story. So the, it's it's a wild story, and I, I actually really like freaking people out about it from the beginning because I think totally. it sets a certain tone for how to approach it, which is this is an experiment. This is not something that is a religion, a dogma, anything like that. It's purely an experiment. Mm -hmm. So basically the story is this man, his name was Alan Krakow at the beginning, (laughs) before this experience, he was really an outcast in society, living in Ibiza. He had run away from his family and like he was not a healthy person, which I very much think resonates with like Christianity and the taxpayers and and the whores and everything. Like Mm -hmm. the message came through different people, right? Mm -hmm. So there's something there. And he downloaded this information over a seven day period. This voice took over his body and gave him this information that is essentially a synthesis of all of these ancient wisdoms throughout time, which he was not at all into any of these ancient wisdoms. So being astrology, being one of them, Mm -hmm. The I Ching coming from China, which is essentially like 64 energies that we all have access to, or well, that are make up human society um, and how they show up, these different frequencies. And the Kabbalah, which is the Judaism, it's like kind of mysticism from, yeah, Judaism, and then Mm -hmm. also the chakra system, all pulled together into one system to where you don't necessarily need to understand all the individual parts. When you understand the system or the body graph of human design, when you look up your chart and there's all these colors and shapes and things, that's the only thing you need to understand. Everyone's, every chart looks the same. There's just going to be different activations. So once you can learn Mm -hmm. that, there's such a power to it. And so it was taught, it was pitched to me as your manual for moving through life without resistance. And I was like, sign me up. (laughs) Yes. 
Like, I'll yes, take please. one of those. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> Give me my manual. Yes, please. And so slowly you begin to decode this manual. And in that decoding process, you learn how to go about making decisions correctly for yourself. And each of us has a different way of going about that. Mm -hmm. And it's very much, like I said at the beginning, an experiment. You learn something about yourself. You observe it. You see, is this even true for me? Does this work? Does this not work? And in that experimentation, you begin to gain wisdom and awareness at a whole different level of how you've been conditioned your entire life by your family, your religion, your upbringing, your environment that has shifted you away from who you were born to be. And as you begin to drop the things of who you are not, who you are begins to rise to the surface. And it's a really beautiful process that has is not necessarily for the faint of heart. <laughs> it's not the easiest to, depending on what your chart looks like, to let go of proving yourself, for example, or, or being a doer and doing all the things and looking on top of it, right? It's like slowly you begin to let go of these elements and then you begin to discover the beauty of who you are, which is so different and so unique. Yeah. So can we kind of walk through some of the basic yes. terms? I know there are the four auric types. You got like strategy, authority, gates, channels. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of break down some of the basics so that when yeah. eventually we look at my chart, it makes some sort of sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the first thing that you're going to discover, if you just go type in, you know, human design chart, I highly recommend going to Jovian Archive or My Body Graph. Those are the two that I'd recommend. They're more like traditional or getting the Neutrino Design app on your phone. It'll allow you to save multiple phone, multiple charts on your phone, have easy access and all that. Um, so the first thing that you're going to learn is what type am I? And there's four types. So the first is being a generator. Generators make up 70% of the population. A subtype of generators are manifesting generators. Mm -hmm. They go hand in hand. And the reason that they're similar is because really when you hear, oh, I'm just a generator, like 70% of the population is a generator. They're all like me. The only similarity between all generators is that they have a sacral center defined. Nice. Okay. And and this carries a life force energy that's like a motor that never stops going so long as there's there's fuel in the tank. So I like to think about a car that can drive from Texas to California. You just refuel that tank and you can keep going, right? Like that's a generator. Yeah. Okay. When in a state of health, when doing something that they love, when they're doing something that frustrates them, there's like a leak in their tank and they just start burning out. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. So going to a job that you hate every day. Why am I so fatigued? I don't know what's going on. I have no energy, you know, having to pick up after a toddler all the time when you're not designed to be that way, like whatever it is, right? You can have these energetic drains in life. And so doing an analysis of your life and saying how much of my life is spent doing something I'm satisfied doing versus mm -hmm. things I hate can be incredibly life transformational for a generator. And okay. being okay with leaning into satisfaction and not seeing that as being something that is selfish can also be very freeing. So what's the difference between generators and manifesting generators? Yes. So the difference from a chart perspective is the sacral is somehow going to be connected to the throat. So, or one of the other motors, which I won't get into specifics, but it's the ego, the solar plexus and the root, one of those will have a energetic path that is getting to the throat. And what that really means is that they can take an idea to reality relatively quickly. So not only do they have the doer capacity, but they have the ability to communicate what needs to be done, which then can get things into action quicker. So when you can communicate clearly, hey, we need to do X, Y, and Z, an idea can begin to turn into reality. Okay. And so manifesting generators are the gladiators of the world. They're, they, they're the super doers. They're the multi-passionate people. They have three projects going at all times, three spinning plates. The generators are a little bit more chill, generally speaking, can be a little bit more chill. Uh, more of that consistent hum in the background, the one that can keep going, they're steady, they're stable. Um, that's kind of the, the distinguishing factor from an energetic standpoint. 
Okay, so it's like the fixed modality in astrology between cardinal fixed and mutable. <laughs> fixed is like they can they can keep going. They can do the middle part. Um, okay, and then what about the the other types, auric types? Yes. So the next one is the projector, and this is this is what I am. Mm-hmm. And twenty percent of the population are projectors. Okay. We are here to guide the energy of generators. So we are here to observe. We have a penetrating aura that is going to penetrate into another individual's sternum and absorb information. So we are interesting. We can re we see the world in a very different way. We move through seeing layers that people don't really want you to see. And we love to point out those layers to people. (laughs) And people don't like that. (laughs) I'm sure. (laughs) Yeah. And so if you you're a projector and you've gone around your whole life giving people unsolicited advice and you, you've lived your life being very bitter that no one listens to the advice that you have, that is a sure sign that you are a projector and that really the only thing that you've been missing is that you need to learn to wait for the invitation. Because when you learn to wait for the invitation as a projector, we are here to be recognized. We have the amazing powers to be able to see things that other people can't see and to call out what needs to be changed and what can bring more satisfaction to the world and these different uh, efficiencies and systems that can make life better, you're here to be recognized for it. But if you don't wait for that invitation, you're going to burn energy that you do not have because you're not a generator. You can't keep going and going and going. Mm. And so it's really a protective measure to sit back to learn to wait for the invitation, and when recognized, then give the value, the pearls of wisdom that you have. Okay, okay. And then what else? Other types. So then there is the manifester. And manifestors, we are almost all in this world taught to be manifestors when only 9% of the population are manifestors. Oh, do you say more? (laughs) Yeah. So manifestors get an urge, and they go out and they follow that urge. They're here to carve a path to where we are going. They used to be the kings and queens of the kingdom that would say, we're going here, and then all the generators get into place to make it happen. So they don't have that generative life force energy. They can keep going and going and going, but they have the manifesting capability of being able to communicate what needs to get done. Mm, Okay. And so they're either 200% or zero. Like they, they have bursts of energy, bursts of urges, and then they kind of disappear for a little bit. They, they go down. And so that's very healthy for them to operate in that way. Okay. Um, do you have any examples before we get to the last one? Do you have any examples of celebrities that are manifestors? Yes. Adele is a manifester. Interesting. And she will produce an album. She will wow the world. It will be incredible. Uh, Manifestors have a a repelling aura. They're like a bullet coming out of a gun. They're going to push everything aside and they can walk to where they want to go. That's like the the energy of the manifestor can carve a path to where they want to go. Very different Mm -hmm. than a generator that's absorbed, which is enveloping. It's going to pull life to you. Manifestors kind of push it away so that they can go where they need to go. So Adele, she'll create an album. And then she disappears for a while and doesn't produce anything and then comes back out with another album, however long after the fact. That is a great example. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And yeah, they're, they're a very unique type and, and they, unlike, you know, the rest of us were told, go out, conquer your dreams, do whatever you want, especially like the millennial (laughs) generation, (laughs) right? It's like... Well, actually, that's going to create a lot of frustration for a lot of the population or bitterness. And so for manifestors, they are the ones that actually do go out and do what they want, but they are going to impact everyone around them when they do it. And so they learn not to. And so for them, their Mm -hmm. lesson is to learn, actually, I am here to carve my own path, to do my own thing, to, to make it happen. And I need to just inform other people what I'm about to do because it will impact them. Okay. Gotcha. That's really interesting. And then the last type, is it reflectors? Yes, reflectors. Okay. <laughs> so 1% of the population is reflectors, which a lot of people almost immediately write off. They exist. They're out there. I've met many I know, reflectors. I know of one. One of my favorite <laughs> podcasters is always like, I'm a reflector. I'm a reflector. Oh, um, nice. So I want to okay. know what that means. Yeah, yeah. So being a reflector, they have a sampling aura. So 
they can, they're kind of like a water bug. They can land on someone's aura. They're sitting on top of it. They can feel it. They can tap in with it, but they're not like a projector that's going to absorb it and be Mm. impacted by it. They can just reflect what is happening for that person. And so people usually love reflectors because often they see themselves in the reflector. (laughs) Interesting. Okay. And so reflectors are really here to be the analysts of the world, to be the canaries in the coal mine that can say something's going wrong and we need to address this. So the state of a reflector often reflects the state of the environment that they're living in, in the health of that environment. So if the reflector Mm -hmm. is in a very unhealthy state, living in disappointment, like it just yet not in a good place, then that whole environment needs to be shifted. Um, And so, you know, the canary in the coal mine concept. Yes. Yes, absolutely. My dad's from West Virginia. So I really know the canary (laughs) in the coal mine concept. So with, with these types, it seems like the main, is the main difference the amount of energy they have and how, how they either absorb or like impact others energy Yeah, so the aura types are really the main differentiator at the top, right? So human design is the science of differentiation in that every single person is different. Two generators are going to be very different from one another. But the similarity that they're going to have is how their aura works, being enveloped, being pulling life to you, which then relates to strategy because each of the types will have a certain strategy. So generators, wait to respond. Life comes to you. You are pulling things to you. Sit back, wait for things to come to you. It's like the director that's like, do you want blue or do you want red, right? And your sacral response, uh-huh, uh-uh, I want the red, right? Like, okay. You know, do you want to eat pizza tonight? Uh-uh, oh, right? Oh, no, that sounds terrible. Like, follow that, right? So that's mm. the strategy for the generator. The projector, wait for the invitation being the strategy, the um, manifester in form, and initiate. So inform people what you're going to do before you initiate, okay. which is not, doesn't come naturally to them. They want to not be controlled and do their own thing. Mm-hmm. And then for the reflector, they're really here to wait 30, uh, 28 days because they're very connected to the lunar cycle and the lunar cycle will go around the wheel in a 28 day period. And so they evolve as over that time and they have a consistency within that. So they can learn to tap into that consistency over that period of time and make decisions. Okay. So one question I have, because I had done my human design chart years ago, just online. So you're going to tell me so much that I don't know, but if I remember correctly, I'm a generator, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So something I have to ask, how as a generator, do you not feel like you are just one of millions? Like suddenly I feel like I am the least interesting, unique soul in the world, help. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, that so that is a very common reaction for generators. And it's like, it's the first thing that I like to burst because that's so not true. When you, like I said, the only similarity of all generators is you will have a sacral center defined. And the way that it, a center gets defined is that it, there's a channel coming out of it. And so if you look at your chart and there's the second one up from the bottom that's in the middle, that's the sacral center, you can see what channel you have and you can say, I have energy to insert the channel that you have. So you don't have boundless energy in all departments. You have energy in that one area. So you specifically have energy to say yes to commitments and be in that commitment and all the way through, no matter how messy it gets, which it will get messy. <laughs> Okay, interesting. And I've heard you talk on videos about how one of the centers, it might be that one, is your gift. Is that what you're referring to now or is that a different thing? Yeah, so the channels are your gifts. The channels are the differentiating factors. So these are the the two things that will – the a line that will connect two of the big shapes, the chakras. Um, okay. within the chart. And so those very much refer to like your strengths and the consistent elements that you have in your chart. Okay. So if someone right now is listening and they're not watching this, can we kind of paint a mental image of what a chart looks like and just briefly say like these shapes mean this, these lines yes. mean this. I think that could be helpful. Yes. So the big shapes refer, they're they're pulled from the chakra system. So if you have any awareness of that, they're 
that's where they come from, except that there are nine of them instead of the traditional seven within the chakra system. Mm -hmm. So the bottom one is going to be the root chakra. This is adrenalized energy. Think of a shot of espresso. Okay. So when you have this colored in in your chart, you have consistent access to that shot of espresso kind of energy. When it's not colored in, you're not really here to deal with pressure and stress in your life, and you don't want to design your life around that, right? Okay. So each of the centers being colored in or not colored in are going to indicate something about you and how your energy operates correctly, right? Okay. Um, then you go up, you have the sacral, so 70% of the population are going to have this colored in or defined in their chart. That means they're a generator. That means they have access to that life force energy. That means that they have to do something that they're satisfied doing. When it's not white, you're going to be one of the other types. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That makes me feel better, by the way. You should know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being a generator. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's the only difference. Distinguishing factor. Yeah. Uh, and there will be other ways that you are, you know, like I said, it, that's energy to X, Y, and Z, right? So the, yeah. the root is pressure to X, Y, and Z. Like for me, it's pressure to fight. Like I have pressure to fight within my system, Interesting. right? Energy to, you have energy to commit for the long run. Okay. To say yes to the commitments. Um. Then over to the right is the solar plexus, and this is the center for emotions. So when it's colored in, which 50% of the population has it colored in, you are on the emotional wave, we say, which means that you have a consistent experience of your emotions. Okay. There is a relatively consistent pattern that you are at any point in time on a map from fear to pain to joy and back again. And there's a certain way of going about it. It, when it, you are off the emotional wave, you, you have an inconsistent way of dealing with emotions and you tend to walk on eggshells to please everyone around you because you don't want to upset them because any white centers in your chart are where you receive energy. That's where oh. you're going to be receptive. Okay. So it either so is when it's it's coming your from chart. yourself or from others in a way. Exactly. Okay. And when it's coming from others, those are traps in life. That's where you're going to learn. It's a learned behavior. It's areas where you walk on eggshells to overcome like whatever that center is that like, for example, people with it white within their chart, this is me, like I'm incredibly empathic and have learned to avoid emotions. It's like the ain't got time for that energy. Like I don't want to upset this person, and so I'm going to say what they need me to say in order to get through life. But that's yeah. actually going to lead me off my trap, my path. So learning to speak my truth has been incredibly valuable. Interesting. And so what is the message from the white centers? Is it that we have to overcome the energy that we're receiving from that? Or what, what exactly is that teaching us? Yeah, so there's a question for each of the white centers within the chart that will allow you to, I like to think about it as decluttering your energy to be able to better tap in with your authority, right? So for you being emotional authority, you have to ride the emotional wave mm -hmm. and not make decisions at the height of your wave or at the bottom of your wave. Because when you do, you're going to regret it. Right. And so you want to ride that wave all the way through till the end before you make a decision. And the white centers, if you can ask the questions for the open centers, which we can like link to something uh, for that, yeah. um, you can then gain awareness of before I make a decision for the question for the open ego is like, do I think I have something to prove? Mm. You move through life constantly feeling you have something to prove. And so you say yes to things that you should say no to because you think you have something to prove. Interesting. Okay. So I, I think I'm, I'm starting to understand the shapes much better. What about the, the lines connecting them? Are they, are they channels? Are they gates? Yes, those are channels. So okay. when, there, when there's a full line between two centers, those are called channels, but they're made up of two gates on each side. Okay. So like half of the line is a gate. Yes. Okay. And those gates, to add a deeper layer, will relate to your astrology placement. Like when you look at the planetary placements, each gate is placed somewhere. 
So it might be your sun and it might relate to being a Gemini and you can see where that shows up in the chart. That's so interesting. Everyone listening or watching should know that with Amanda and I being in astrology classes together, what I love, like it makes me laugh, is that we'll learn something in our live class and she's like, okay, I'm trying to make this come to terms with how I understand it through HD. So I love it. I've I've learned a lot of the basics just by listening to you make the connections. And because I love astrology, I love that there's astrology in HD. It's great. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we have the shapes. They're called centers, right? They're called centers. Okay. So we have the centers, the gates, the channels. Are there any other basic building blocks before we look at a chart? The There will be planetary placements along the side usually that will say where each gate falls under what planet. So you'll see, this is my sun gate. This is my earth gate, which is something that doesn't, astrology doesn't cover, but this is my moon gate, right? So each of those will relate to your astrology site or astrology uh, chart. Okay. But those are the other things is the planetary placements. And so you can see how that flavors you that activation and so i like to think about like high level the hubs are energy centers you either have consistent energy in that area or not right so it's either uh something that you're giving out into the world and impacting the world with or that's where you receive energy okay and then how it's activated are through the gates and the channels that makes a lot of sense. Okay, I love that. The way my my brain works, I need like the the system, the analogy, and then it clicks. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a complex system, but I think in general, it's like you can get value from it very relatively quickly without having to go so deep into it. Yeah. Okay, should we dive into my chart? Are we ready? <laughs> sure. Let's do it. Can you see it? Yes, I can. Beautiful. Okay. okay, so now we are looking at your chart, right? And there's a lot of things that we can go into within it, but I think the first like very basic level is understanding those open centers and the questions to ask that will pull you away from making the proper decision. Okay. So I think even staying very high level will be helpful for yeah. everyone. Yeah. And then it will also be relevant for the audience. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. As long as it's helpful for me. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be helpful for you for sure. Yes. So uh, you have, you know, you're a generator and you're, you have this center defined being on the emotional wave that we previously mm -hmm. talked about. And so that means you need to sleep on decisions. So you are someone that life is going to come to you. You're meant to sit back wait to respond for things to arise within your world via what we call your sacral voice, which is like a uh-huh, uh-uh kind of response, like okay. entrusting that and not letting the mind get in the way. So, you know, do you want to take level one to three astrology? Yes. <laughs> right? Like there's like a, there's an almost like a movement of your body in that direction, whether it, it comes out verbally or not, it depends on the design. Yeah. And um, quick question about that, Amanda. Does yeah. that mean that I can't initiate? I have to like sit back and wait for everything to come to me? Yes. I <laughs> hate that. <laughs> hate. <laughs> so when you first discover it, you do kind of hate it because you've been used to running your life in, in a completely different way. Yeah. However, over time, right? It's the same thing with being a projector. Oh, I got to wait for the invitation. What? Now I love waiting for the invitation. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything. Life comes to me. You know, I get recognized, right? So for yeah. you, life comes to you. For me as a projector, it's like people will recognize me. They will call me up. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I can take advantage of it. And it doesn't mean that you're sitting around twiddling your thumbs in the meantime. You need right. to stay busy doing what you're satisfied doing. Okay. Right? So you're never going to be sitting still necessarily. Like you're not designed to sit still. You're designed to be a doer. Yeah. But you will in that process of like doing what you love, 
the more that you can do things that you love, the more that you can fill your plate with that satisfaction, the more life will begin to pull opportunities to you. That makes sense. That That's really cool because it's also, I mean, just big in manifestation, period. Like kind of stay stay in your lane, do the things that fill you up, energize you, kind of help you give out good energy in the world, and then the opportunities will arise. Yep. And it, it can be scary. Like I always say, like, wait one extra day, wait one extra hour, you know, like when you're in a place where you're like, I can't keep going with this or things aren't coming, opportunities aren't coming to me. It's like, okay, can I, can I stretch this comfort zone a little bit to where I'm not going to initiate? So my husband is a generator generator, and I've watched him go through many opportunities where even I'll be freaking out about like, you really need to like do something here, like be a little bit more of an initiator, you know? And it's like, he's like, yeah, but like, I'm just not being called in that direction. But then it's like the next day something happens. And now all of a sudden he's being invited to be a consultant for this one person and things begin to unfold and mm-hmm. he'll begin making money. And But if he would have initiated, the thing that happens with generators is you fill your plate with these things because you're initiating and then other people look at you and think, her plate's full. I have nothing to, I, I, there's no need to bring her an opportunity. And so you miss opportunities. That is so real. Because I also have the tendency to, to constantly fill my plate where even for myself, like opportunities that I want to embark on or I want to give myself, it's like, uh, she doesn't have the time. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's so real. Okay. And so you really want to focus on like, okay, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to wait to respond. I'm going to do what I love doing. And I'm going to trust that in doing that, things will come to me. And and you can always increase like how you're going to respond, right? Like mm-hmm. for you being, you can look at your chart and see this decibel point here and this decimal point, this ends up forming your profile. So you're a one three profile. That is an investigating Mm -hmm. martyr. So you're someone that's going to deeply investigate something. You and I both. It's like, I want to get to the bottom. I want to get to the foundations. You feel very insecure for a long time until you have a solid foundation. Yes. It's so real. And what you said about what you love about human design is it's like, I can't get to the bottom. And that's how I feel about astrology too. Any system like that, where it's like, wow, I thought I knew a decent amount. And then I listened to a podcast and I realized I know nothing. That kind of thing excites me. (laughs) Yes. And and a lot of ones feel that way. People that have twos and up, they're like, no, that's not not my thing. Yeah. Um, We have a very different way of operating. And so for you, investigating is satisfying, right? So diving into things that you want to investigate, you're not going to sit still. And then also getting your hands dirty. The three line is that, mm-hmm. like getting your hands dirty, trial and error, failing, understanding that failing is merely learning how to succeed, right? It's yeah. not actually failing. Yeah. Uh, There's been a lot of that on my path. So I'm happy to hear that, that it's meant to be that way. <laughs> yeah. So your profile is the costume that you wear in this life, and and it can give you some tips for what to do while waiting, Mm -hmm. right? So life comes to you. Like, are there any decisions that you're currently making in life? It's helpful when you get specific. Mm -hmm. Um, It's okay. Well, yes-ish, but it's hard to frame it. I mean, it's very much along the lines of – at what point do I bring my offerings out into the world again and what form will it take and should I start a website now? All of the kind of shoulds and I'm constantly sifting through shoulds versus what's my gut telling me. So I don't know if that helps. Yeah, and what's in front of you, right? Mm. So like when you leave today this call, like what comes next, right? So when you say what comes next, are you saying – like, like after this call, just see what, what comes my way. Yeah. Like what does your gut or your satisfaction lead you to? Is it, I just found this new website that is an AI website that allows me to create everything automatically by typing it in and I want to play with it, right? Like allow that play mm-hmm. to be there and allow that to begin to unfold your path rather than being in the mind of like, I should do this, I should do this, I should do this. That makes sense. I have another question about decision making for 
for my type. Um, but this is probably helpful for other people too. So you mentioned that I have, I think the emotional center where I have to sleep on it and not, I have to like ride out the emotional wave. So it's not when I'm really excited or really low, but we also talked about that if I'm asked a question, if the universe is like, Devin, do you want the offerings now or later? My, my gut, that feels like an emotion to me. I'm either like, oh yeah, that sounds great. And then tomorrow I'm like, oh my God, what have I signed up for? So how do I differentiate between the two? How do I listen great to question. my gut? Yeah, and ride it out. So the main four areas that you're going to want to sleep on it is career, right? Career moves, mm -hmm. relationships, and bonding, including like friendships, like not immediately bonding with someone and being like, we're going to be besties. It's like, okay, let's like, you want to play hard to get. Anytime you have an emotional center that's defined, like play hard to get, it's going to go better for you. You're going to be even more attractive to more people. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Then um, where you live is another one. Mm. Being like waiting to respond to whatever is is showing up for you in that area, uh, and then so it's relationships, love. So so technically they they distinguish between relationships, bonding, where you live, and love. Okay. So that's more of like the the romantic side of things. So those are the four areas. So like, what do you want to eat today? You don't necessarily need to sleep on that, right? What do you want to wear today? You don't need to sleep on that, right? Do I want to go to the grocery store? You don't need to sleep on that. Like you can do those things, yeah. but it's those four key areas of life that you really want to ensure that you are waiting on it. So the response, I mean, it, it's, it's a little bit elusive because it's very much in the body. It's how you move through life. So it's, we're so used to, I'm going to goal set, I'm going to create this path, I'm going to make this thing happen versus, you know what, like I am feeling called to scroll on Instagram. And because you scroll on Instagram, you see X, Y, and Z that pops up that is a branding specialist that could create your website for you, right? Like, mm -hmm. and, and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to respond to this and you're going to sleep on it, right? That thing is there and now you sleep on it and then then you can get an answer from there. But before, as you are doing that, you want to ask the question, do I think I have something to prove? So like all of those things that you mentioned, like should I roll out this offering? Should I do this? Should I do that? Like is there a specific offering that you're debating rolling out? <laughs> It's interesting. I don't know if this is in the chart at all, or maybe this is just kind of a universe manifestation thing, but I've often found I'm invited to do things when I have told the universe, like, I'm so done with that thing. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm invited all the time to do breathwork things. And I say yes to some, like the ones that feel aligned, but the same thing happened once I gave up my one-on-one -on -one wellness coaching. Cause I was like, Oh, I kind of prefer group things. Like the constant one-on-one -on -one was draining me a little. And then everyone was like, Oh, I, I want coaching. And I'm like, I really don't want to coach you. <laughs> and so I don't know yeah, what that is, but, but that happens a lot. I honestly think for me, at least my experience of that is that I've been living in a place of misalignment. Mm. And when I get into a place of alignment, the right invitations begin to unfold. So like me having an online presence, I was getting tons of invitations, but they were wanting me to be a doer. They were wanting me to be different than I was. You know, like they weren't truly recognizing me for who I am. So like you know, we're, we're going high level, but I, I think as you go about the experiment, it's not black and white. It mm. is very much like in the moment responding and for you sleeping on it will be a, a core component of that. Yeah. But w we can even talk about, I guess, oh, so the questions, do I think I have something to prove? Am I trying to attract attention? Right? Mm. So like before you film an episode, you're choosing episodes. Do I think I have something to prove? Am I doing this episode because I think I have something to prove? Am I trying to get attention? Yes. Okay. Yeah, how do I, how do I not get attention? Like, me asking that question has made me like totally shift my content marketing strategy, totally shift how I go about deciding on topics like those that, two combinations. That makes sense. I think this is honestly going to be a game changer even for filming this podcast. Like when I do solo episodes, especially um, sometimes even for guests, but there is, I'm constantly weighing the, 
do I feel like I should be recording right now or I should ask this one person or something when like my body and my gut and my emotions are like, I'm so freaking tired. Like I have nothing to give, but there is a sense of like, I have something to prove. I have to show up. I have to be seen even on something like Instagram stories. Like there is this concept of you'll, they'll forget about you. You know, you'll, you'll become nothing. The algorithm will hate you. So it's, it's especially hard, I think in the social media world, because there, there is something to prove and there's an essence of, I need to be receiving this attention or recognition or I'm nothing. (laughs) Right. And so learning to let go of that, as you learn to let go of that, that will begin to free up your energy. Because if you're showing up on Instagram stories or you're filming an episode because you think you have something to prove or you're trying to keep attention, right? Mm -hmm. It will begin to lead you down more of a path of frustration versus, you know what? It actually is a beautiful day outside and I'm going to go for a walk. And because you choose to go for a walk, you run into someone at the park that has this opportunity that's perfect for you. And you would have never gone if you didn't go to the walk. That's right? so real. Yeah. So it's like those in the moment decisions that are like these things are the white centers are hijacking your energy. Mm, okay. You in areas that you are not supposed to be in. What is the white you, center on the, the left? Yeah. So the question for this is, Am I holding on to something I should let go of? (laughs) (laughs) Yes is the answer. (laughs) Do you know like what it is? You don't have to say it out loud, but does something come to mind right away? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I can say just in the way that I've been sharing, I've evolved so much. I mean, straight out of college, I was a health and wellness coach, all of that. And I haven't, two things, I haven't, individually coached someone or taught yoga for at least like three or four years, but it's still kind of part of my identity, identity. you know, what, what I could do, um, especially when I feel like I currently don't have offerings, like I'm working on the podcast, it, it becomes like a, oh, but like I, I do this, but I don't do that. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah. So th- this will be an interesting part for you. So you can see 29 right here is your conscious son, which is Gemini, right? And like, because so, you know your son is Gemini. Well, interesting. So, my son is in Leo. My rising's in Gemini. Oh, sorry. Then, then never mind. Then it is. Then it is Leo. I'm learning. I'm learning what they are. Yeah. Okay. In astrology with you, but then this would be. There you go. I keep saying Gemini. Your rising is Gemini. That's why. Okay. Yeah. You're Leo. Duh. That makes sense. So this is Leo. It's like, yes, it's the cheerleader. It wants to say yes. It wants to do things. It wants to go where it's, you know, what, whatever the energy is, like you're very fast to say yes, mm-hmm. which is one of the reasons why you need to learn to slow down, right? Like yes. slow down. Right? Yeah. It's not a tendency that you want to do because when you commit to your, your energy to something, this is, they call it the deepest of deep. It's the abyss. Mm -hmm. It is when you commit to something, it is the deepest commitment that you will make like in the entire chart. That's your son, which is 70% of who you are. And it's connected to this whole channel, which this is the love of the body. So a lot of people that have this channel, it's the channel of discovery. It is the love of the body and trusting in your higher self that I am here where I need to be. I need to take care of my vessel so that I can keep going. I can keep living this life. And so breath work and yoga being tied to the body Mm. is part of your identity. Yes. And so maybe it's that you're holding on to an element of it because you think you have something to prove in this area right? Or trying to get attention with that thing that you think works when maybe they are aligned, right? This is my whole like not letting go of my video identity. It's like it is aligned. There is something there. It is who I am. It's where you came from. You can't change your past. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's a part of it that you need to let go of. Yeah, that makes sense. I love that. And I also really appreciate the part about cheerleader wanting to say yes. When I was growing up, my parents always used to tell me, Devin, no is a complete sentence. (laughs) And full stop. Like learn to say no, because maybe especially with that emotional wave, 
I mean, I've even had like speaking engagements where afterwards, you know, people will come up and say, oh, like, I want you to do this or whatever. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I would love to. And we exchange info and then they'll reach out on LinkedIn and I realize like the details of the opportunity or something and it doesn't feel aligned. And I'm like, oh no, like I'm so uninterested. And then yeah. I'm screwed. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so that's why you're playing hard to get right? Yeah, that sounds, you know, I, I would be, I would love to hear the details. Send them to me. And, and with human design, I think it's given permission, people permission, like if you're listening to this and you're emotional authority, like tell people, I don't make decisions spontaneously. I sleep on decisions. And so I need time to get back to you on that. That's amazing. So I could spend forever on this chart before we wrap up because I know we've spent a while on my chart. Are there any other like big things that that stare you at the face right now that you feel like you should bring up or should we kind of close out the chart? Yeah, I think in general, the things that I would look at when you're looking at your chart, look at your type, look how you're supposed to make decisions in terms of the strategy and authority, which will relate to your type. And then go ahead and just Google, what is 4629? Read about it, right? What is 1949? What is 4130? These are the traits that you have that are very consistent in you that will be operating in the background, no matter if you like them or not. <laughs> and then know that if anything is red in the chart, you're going to be completely unaware that this is happening. Wow. In your life. The, something that's fully black, you're going to be aware of it, right? You you understand that there is a love of the body and a yeah. love of the higher self, like there, yeah. And that your direction is really going to come from that. Yeah. But so you can look up these things and just look up a video. It might be cryptic, like let it soak in, and and then just experiment with it. Try it on. See, does this actually resonate for me? Is this real? Because that's ultimately what it comes down to. Yeah. Absolutely. And I even, it's funny, I have the human design book and I saw in the introduction, I was reading, flipping through it last night. And I think the founder said something like, I'm not asking you to believe anything, like try it on for yourself. If it doesn't resonate, throw it out, but, but allow it to enhance your life. And that's what I love that you talk about the ways in which it's helped your business. I mean, even in this episode you've talked about, you realized you had different energy than the the teachers you were following, things like that. So I think just getting clear on what some of those things are so that you can change the way you make decisions and the way you react to the world. Yes. Yeah. Making decisions, where you're going to be hijacked, like looking at those open center questions, right? Yeah. So it's distinguishing between like, who am I and who am I not? The white is who you are not. The colors, no matter if they're black or white, red is who you are. Mm, well said, my friend. Okay, before we jump to our final rapid fire questions, is there anything that I missed about video, your pivot slash ego death, human design, anything else on your heart that you want to share before these rapid fire questions? I think you've done a great job. You did your research. <laughs> Yeah, you instigated me. <laughs> We've covered a lot of territory, which is classic for my Gemini rising. It's like I want to talk it. a little about everything. <laughs> so, okay, it. rapid fire questions. So there are always four. The first is personalized for the guests, and then the last three stay the same. So the first question: Do you have any tips for aspiring entrepreneurs out there? Hmm. I was actually just texting someone yesterday, like if you are in a full-time job and you have golden handcuffs, do not expect to take the leap and make the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. That is an unrealistic expectation. There will be a time where you are making less. Allow it to be okay and give yourself a runway. That's entrepreneurship. <laughs> oh, I love that. I feel like it's very hip these days to just take the leap, but recognize that you might be making none or very little in the beginning and that's okay. So yes. I agree. Yes. Okay. Number two, what spiritual or health practice do you do that you would recommend for everyone? Like it's just that amazing. 
honestly asking the questions for the open centers that you have 100 percent. i love that i've never gotten that answer before <laughs> of course <laughs> that's so good okay number three is what does this world need most these days for global healing and up leveling knowing that you are unique and that you don't have to be someone that you're not in that society is more and more celebrating that. Like we are in a time where that's okay. That has not been okay in the past, but here we are. That's so true. Oh, amen. Okay. Final question. What is your one wish or ask for everyone listening? Hmm. That you love to look like you learn to love your weird. However you're weird. Like I love own it, that. live it, be okay with it. I'm weird and it's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so good. It, and our weird is what makes us so special. I love that. And unless we accept it, then no one, no one will even see it. Yes, I agree. Well, wow. Final question, just so that people can figure out where to find you. Where do people find you in the online space? The best place as of right now is just YouTube. You can watch whatever video calls you. It's just Amanda Horvath. And in the description, there's lots of resources from my quick start guide to human design to get you up and running or my quick start guide to video or my training on four steps to master video and launch your online presence, a webinar. Yes. Um, yes. So you can find all, all the goodies in the description. I highly recommend her YouTube channel. Her email newsletter has like amazing nuggets of wisdom. Everything Amanda Horvath, I am fully behind. So you definitely have my gold star, my friend. <laughs> thank you. I so appreciate it. Yes. Thanks well, for thank seeing you. me. Yes. And thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your weird and your wisdom with the world. We just need more people like you paving their own path and sharing their message with the world. So thanks for role modeling it for the rest of us. Yeah, right back at you. Yeah, thank you. And for everyone listening, we will see you again next week. Bye. Hi, friends. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I enjoyed having it with Amanda. She has taught me so much in the few short weeks that we have known each other through our astrology course. I have texted her about many of the pains and woes of the entrepreneurial path and she has time and time again been there either as a support or as a source of wisdom and guidance. So if you are interested in any of Amanda's offerings, I hope that you check her out, whether you are an aspiring entrepreneur, someone looking to get your message out into the world, or simply interested in human design and what it has to say about you and why you're here and what you're here to do, definitely go ahead and check her out. She is amazing, 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 and I'm honored to know her. My biggest takeaway from today's conversation was honestly the idea that we're all different and we're all so beautifully unique. We were designed to be different and to follow the decision-making patterns, the interests and desires, dreams and hopes that are unique to us and our human design and our path. So as Amanda said, Embrace your weird, stay true to your weird, let your freak flag fly, and maybe, if you're ready, even share your message with the world. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a family member or friend, and rate and review the podcast anywhere you get your podcasts. I would really appreciate it, and as I always say, it helps to share the messages that I'm trying to share here, the messages of love, light, and life is good and magical. Okay, my friends, until next week, I already cannot wait to see you again. Bye for now. Bye.